Hi babies, it's Lola. I just wanted to spill some tea about my plastic surgery and show you this makeup look I did that Kim Kardashian wore. So please keep watching so you can find out all the dirt. Okay, so I already moisturized my face. I'm gonna go in with my Cover FX Dewy Skin Primer because Kim has a very, very dewy look. I'm not really oily, but I'm a little bit dry these days. So I think this is a good moisturizing primer to use. I'm gonna use my Nomad Cosmetics Tokyo Collection eyeshadow palette, as well as my Kylie Cosmetics Summer palette from last year. So her eyes are really smoky but also really bright. So her crease is really emphasized. So I want to emphasize my the crease of my eye um, and also warm it up and raise my eyebrows a little bit. So one thing that I wasn't really prepared for from my facial feminization surgery was the amount of hair loss that I was going to receive. The hair loss was very, very intense and very, very um, drastic. The hair loss was mostly around my hairline where they did the incision and it was also kind of everywhere else. And I mostly attribute that to the stress of the surgery being very, very traumatizing. So the body really kind of freaks out because of the surgery. There's a lot of stress that happens to the body, even if you don't necessarily feel like stress, like you would for like an exam or getting in a conflict, but it was just like internal stress. So I had lost quite a bit of hair, but only I noticed it. Um, no one else did, and it was mostly on my temples, so I had some big incisions, some long incisions, and the incisions, they healed really well, and um, at first because of the swelling, the incision grows, so it actually looks wider than what it is, it's just swelling, so I, um, it looked like I had really, really drastic incisions, but it was mostly swelling that made it look more than what it did. That brings me to swelling and I had about like eight or nine procedures done so the swelling was pretty intense. Um, if I could rank how the swelling was for me, um, 10 being like like overly swollen where you have to go to the hospital, um, one being like like there's no swelling at all. Um, I was probably, for my jaw surgery, I was probably at like a 10. I, for my jaw surgery, I had to go to my doctor and get steroid in, um, steroids to minimize the swelling from the, the jaw surgery. I don't necessarily feel like I had a bad reaction, but my face wasn't bandaged after the surgery, so I wasn't really sure why. Like, I thought that's kind of what was gonna happen. My surgery was banded for my part two of my FFS surgery, but not the first surgery. I used my Morphe M44-3, and this is such a nice brush because it's really, really pointy. So I can just outline what I want to color and then I can build up the color. So with the swelling, I had a lot of blurry vision and weird thing about the blurry vision was I really thought I had blurry vision because of the medication, almost like I was dizzy. 
I stopped taking my medication and started taking an over-the-counter drug, it was more prevalent that my vision was blurred. And it wasn't just like fuzzy, it was like I was seeing double. So I was super sensitive to the light. It was really, really weird. I honestly didn't leave my house that much because of how, how sensitive I was to the light. Even though I didn't have that much bruising or swelling around my, my face, the internal um, swelling was what was causing the blurry vision. So it was really kind of tricky because I there was nothing really I could do about it. Like I would use ice packs on my eyes, but nothing I used or no amount of ice packs really helped the swelling. It just was something that had to kind of heal on its own. And the blurry vision lasted a month. I went to work after two weeks because I went to work after two weeks, um, I was still kind of suffering a lot of the symptoms, but I kind of just was a little bit more cautious about everything. So that kind of really tripped me out. I really wasn't sure if this was going to be permanent, but it was temporary. I mean, I had talked to my doctor multiple times and he confirmed that it was temporary, so I kind of felt better about that. But it kind of sucked, like, I felt like I probably needed more time to heal from the surgery and a little bit more than two weeks. I probably could have taken a whole month off. I was working because I, I needed to pay my bills, so there was no way I was gonna be able to take time off. So on top of the swelling, one thing that I wasn't really prepared about was having keloid scars from the surgery. Now, my skin is really thick. My skin is a little bit sensitive, and by sensitive it means like when I wash it or scrub or anything like I really get really really red. It was really really prevalent that I was gonna start getting some keloids because some of the tissue from the incisions was kind of raising a little bit and it didn't get like huge you know like sometimes people when they get their ears pierced or the cartilage pierced you get a little bit of a bump and it wasn't really that big. This is where I had the incision and it's kind of scarred a little bit. So I was a little bit hesitant and worried about that, but it has gone down, but I don't really imagine it going down more, but that's what my doctor says, it's a scar. So scars take years and years and years to heal. Um, the scar under my Adam's apple, you can see it's really, really subtle. Um, it's starting to fade, but I don't really go out in the sun, so I don't really have that problem of worrying for hyperpigmentation as much. There's a lot of hyperpigmentation that happens that can happen when you're outside in the sun with exposed scars. Um, the scars will become darker and more visible, so I was just really trying to be cautious of that. It looks kind of crazy. Um, I don't know what I'm, what's happening, but I'm just working it through. The dark gray is really finicky. I haven't used a, I used a little bit of the black. So another thing um, that has to do with the recovery and the skin was the amount of numbness I had. The numbness is always happens, I'm pretty sure, for people, but the longevity of it is a little bit strange. So when I had my jaw surgery, the, my chin was super, super numb for months, and it's kind of like goes round and then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller in the area. I wasn't like worried too much, but it was just something that I was that was in the back of my mind. I was like, I might have a little bit of numbness everywhere. And on the top of my head, on the scalp, the scalp was super numb for a long time too. So I, I wasn't really like, like you can't really feel temperatures, which is kind of weird. So if you wash your hair, you like won't feel it. And it was kind of a really strange sensation. I'm gonna use my NYX black eyeliner. So now that I apply the eyeliner, I'm just smudging the very top edge of the eyeliner so I can get that smokier look. 
I'm also going to use this E35 brush to cut my crease with some concealer. And I'm using the ColourPop Concealer Color in Fair 00 and it's just white. This is that really pretty gray shade. It just kind of diffuses the white. It's not like super gray and it's not really glittery. So because I wasn't going out and I had blurry vision, I was really depressed when I was at home. It's really easy to be like unhappy with how you look when you're recovering and I think that's totally normal. So you kind of start doubting yourself and you kind of wonder if you did the right thing and maybe you start regretting it or maybe you start feeling like it was a bad idea and you start to question if the doctor was a, the bad idea or surgery was a bad idea or um, you kind of just like circle around a lot of negativity and um, I was very very depressed for the first I guess two months. Um, it took me two months to really get out of that. I'm gonna use my NARS Valerius shade and it's a full coverage foundation which I really like because I'm going a little bit glam. I think it'd be a good time to go all out with the coverage. So another thing that I was really kind of not really prepared for was how the surgery was affecting my energy and my sleep. So I'm a pretty heavy sleeper. I can sleep anywhere. I can sleep in a park, I can go to sleep at work, I can go to sleep in a bar. Um, it's really, really amazing how, how I am well I can sleep anywhere. The thing is, because when you're recovering you have to lay propped up against a lot of pillows. So because of sleeping propped up, I had insomnia for over three weeks. Um, I mean it was better after two weeks because I was able to lay back down. I hated sleeping that way. I always sleep on my side. I usually can sleep anywhere, but I could not sleep. So I didn't sleep for two weeks. It was insane. I was so unhappy. And when you don't sleep, you get really depressed. So I was starting to get really depressed and not really sure um, how I felt. So that was just one thing I wasn't prepared for. Like I had one of those, those travel pillows around the neck and that helped a little bit, but in the long run, like not being able to sleep it just did not work for me. When I had my jaw surgery, it wasn't so bad, but when I had my the rest of my surgery, my nose, eyes, and my forehead, and my ears, and lips, and cheeks, <laughs> I had to sleep up, so that was kind of really annoying. So the other thing about my surgery that I wasn't prepared for was, this is kind of TMI, but um, the medication that you take for pain actually makes you constipated. And so I had constipation for um, a good six days and um, my doctor suggested I do a at-home enema and that was a horrible idea. Um, but I did it and it worked and I felt better after that. I'm using a little bit of my Fenty banana powder. I have this LA Colors Jumbo Pencil that I picked up from Ulta. I'm gonna underline my eyes and a little bit of smokiness and do my brows and I'll be right back. So I'm using the KK West Contour Palette in the shade 7 and I like it for contouring, but I always need to go in with the bronzer because I feel like it's not warm enough. Um, so this is nice to just like 
chisel, but I honestly feel like I need a little bit something warmer. And this is super, super neutral, but I like it. I kind of like the Kylie Cosmetics one a little bit better. It works. I'm gonna go in with the Kylie Cosmetics Ice Me Out highlight on my bridge and the Cheers Darling is going to go on my cheeks, center of my forehead, and right above my cupid's bow. I'm going to use my Patrick Ta She's Bold Lip Crayon, which I really love. It's a precision crayon, so it really just makes the style look very, very clean. With no work at all. I wanted to go for a nude look like this picture, so this is the shade number one nude. I'm going to use the Kylie Gloss in the shade I'm a Catch. And it's just going to add a little bit of moisture and extra shimmer. So I can be like Kim. And that's it. So I'm all done with my look inspired by Nikki Makeup. She did Kim Kardashian's look, and I really, really love this kind of vintage 70s take on a smoky eye. Um, I probably need to work on my blending a little bit more, but I really like it. I love the how much it keeps your eyes open without making the smokiness like make your eyes small. It can really shrink your eyes, but this kind of opens it up a little bit, and I really like the look. Uh, I love Nomad Cosmetics. Their stuff is so pretty. I'm really obsessed with the pastels and I'm really obsessed with the Kylie Summer Palette. I've had that for a while and I really really like it and it's people say there's a lot of fallout but I don't really mind. It doesn't feel cheap. I really like it. I hope you all were inspired by this look. I'm really excited to wear this look out and I think it'd be really cute for a nighttime weekend event. Um, and I want to kind of like experiment with different colors aside from gray so that would be kind of cool to use like maybe like a blue tone or like some kind of pink and then a warm gray so I'm gonna keep an eye out for other grays that might be nice I know the Morphe Pony collection also had some grays so I might try the Morphe Pony eyeshadow but um, Am I like Kardashian enough for you? Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you watching my channel. Thanks for coming by. Please don't forget to like and subscribe so you can get notifications when I'm uploading videos. I do them about once a week. So I hope to see you soon. Enjoy!